The Descent is a fun little horror movie that I watched at the request of Don't Drill Me Gaming. I do want to quickly touch base on the aesthetics of the game, like the music and the visuals, before we have to inevitably talk about the story mode. Oh, what am I doing? That's not gonna work. There we go. Apparently it's one of his favorite horror movies, and he wanted me to blather on about it for like 20 minutes, for some reason. Check out his channel, linked down below. Content warning. This video will contain graphic depictions of violence and arguable cannibalism. It's kind of predicated on those concepts. It is a horror movie after all. If you are uncomfortable with any of those, please choose a different video. Thank you. This review will contain spoilers for this movie. This is how my reviews are going to go. If I ever forget to put a spoiler warning, just assume that it's going to have spoilers. Because it's really hard to talk about themes without discussing the plot as a whole. We open on some people whitewater rafting. They're having a lot of fun, and when they're finished, they're greeted by some people who are waiting on the shore. There's a man who greets a cute Asian girl, and another character is suspicious of this for some reason. The man and another woman take their child and start driving. The woman notes how distant he's been as of late. Between this and the previous scene, we can kind of assume that he's been sleeping with the other woman. They drift off into the lane and hit a car. This causes a pipe to fly through their windshield and impale the man and their daughter. The woman, who is also in the wreck, wakes up in the hospital and escapes from all of the fun bondage cords that they keep you in at hospitals. Remember, all doctors are doms. She rushes down the hall and it seems like it might be a dream sequence until the suspicious woman from the beginning comes out and hugs her. Her lover and child are dead. That's fun. Children are awful. We cut to a year later, where they've traveled to the Appalachian Mountains, and we meet up with the Asian woman from before, and a bunch of other women as well. We've collected our entire cast at this point. We have Sarah, played by Shauna McDonald, Juno, played by Natalie Mendoza, Beth, played by Alex Reed, Rebecca, played by Saskia Mulder, Sam, played by Mayanna Burring, and Holly, played by Nora Jane Noon. They probably have distinct personalities, but honestly, I can only recall Sarah, who has PTSD, Holly, the hot alt girl, who is a little aggressive at times, and Juno, who is somewhere in between the other two. They're going spelunking and go out to the cave. Holly goes down too fast and too recklessly, and she's my favorite. They start climbing down, and none of them are wearing gloves for some reason, and that seems like a bad plan. They start making their way through the cave. They are a little lost, but they manage to find a small area that they can squeeze through. Sarah gets stuck and can't move forward. Look, Sarah, you have to calm down. And the only way you're going to do that is to breathe, yeah? Okay, breathe. Beth manages to calm her down enough to get them going. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. What are you afraid of? What are you so afraid of? You can move! You love this one. You love this one. How'd you give Eleven an orgasm? Can't you say it. How'd you give Eleven an orgasm? What did you do? You took a sit <laughs> Okay, okay. All right, we're gonna move now. Take hold of my arm, all right? And that part of the cave collapses. And we get the briefest glimpse of a humanoid arm, letting the audience know that they're not alone down there. They confront Juno and realize that they can't really determine how to get out, and what they remember from the book isn't helpful. Juno reveals that this is an unmapped cave, and the book is worthless, so she left it behind in the truck. They start traveling forward and try to find a way out. They manage to get across a gap where they discover some old spelunking equipment, meaning someone has been out in this cave a uh, hundred years ago or something, which is a very natural piece of knowledge. What does it mean? It means we're not the first. It's a pit on, right? Well, if the cave is down here before, surely there's a better chance of us getting out. This equipment's at least a hundred years old. No one uses stuff like this anymore. I also memorize every piece of spelunking equipment. There's the rope, the bomb, the jetpack, and the teleporting axolotl. 
Holly sees what she thinks is daylight and charges forward, and because the movie wants to break my heart, she slips and falls and breaks her leg. While the party is rolling their heel checks, Sarah wanders off and sees a pale white thing in the distance, and it's vaguely humanoid. So it's a lot like me in the middle of the night when I'm getting water. Juno catches up with her and calls her bonkers. It's just the cave playing tricks on her. They move on and discover a den of animal bones and are mildly concerned about it. A pale humanoid attacks the party, Holly in particular, because they want to hurt me personally. The group scatters, leading Juno to try and stop the monster from getting away with Holly, and she's fighting it off pretty well, but another one tackles her and makes kind of a big deal out of it. The first one rips out Holly's throat. Ooh, that's bad. We need that, right? Walter, we need that, right? Yes, very important. Thank you, Walter. Of course, sir. Juno manages to kill the one that was trying to do the same to her with her nifty pickaxe thing. Beth rudely comes out without proper kitchen staff etiquette. Juno panics and stabs her through the throat, which seems fair. There's not a whole hell of a lot that she can do to try and stop her from dying, but hey, whatever. Beth rolls a final sleight of hand check and manages to palm Juno's necklace, begging the woman not to leave. Juno, having trouble dealing with the trauma, pieces out. Sam and Rebecca are trying to find a way out, but they're headed off by the monsters. They figure out that these things are blind and hunt by sound, kind of like me whenever I get up to pee. Am I one of these things? <laughs> nah, my ears are way smaller. They meet up with Juno eventually, and she says that the miners have seemed to have mapped a way out and they start to follow it. Sarah, who had previously fallen down and passed out, wakes up and uses Holly's camera's night vision to check her surroundings. The beasts start eating Holly, and Sarah just barely manages to keep her lunch down. But honestly, it's still more appetizing than Arby's. Eventually, these beasties peace out and do some more hunting, because they're voracious, apparently. Sarah makes a torch out of an old oil lamp, some of Holly's bandages, and an old bone just lying around. She also discovers Beth, who hasn't bled out somehow yet, and tells her that Juno murdered her, which is a bit of an overstatement, but fine. She hands off Juno's necklace as a piece of proof and asks Sarah to finish her off. She reluctantly does so. She starts to make her way through the area and fights her way through a couple of the beasts, and comes out looking like Sarah Connor. Juno, Rebecca, and Sam make their way forward, and one of these knockoff Bloodborne enemies attacks Sam. She manages to kill it after it rips her throat out, which is metal as fuck. Rebecca is attacked from behind and dragged off, and Juno makes a nominal effort to stop her, but doesn't try all that hard. Juno and Sarah meet up, and Sarah asks about Beth's death, and she totally lies about it, but obviously feels guilty. They get out to another area of the cave and look around, and there are some more friends coming for them. Sarah reveals that she knows that Juno killed Beth, which is unfortunate. Juno takes a pickaxe to the knee, and Sarah books it. She trips and falls and passes out, only to wake up a little bit later and see natural light. And it's been a while since she's tanned, so she rushes outside. She finds her car and starts driving, then pulls off to the side to have a cry, which is moot. Then we are spooked by the visage of Juno, because we needed one last goddamn jump scare for some fucking reason. God, I hate jump scares. We wake up back in the cave and look around to see her daughter that died in the beginning of the movie, and a birthday cake. Then we pan out and reveal that it's all fake, and that she's just blowing on her torch. Alright friends, this is going to be an Olympic level stretch. I'm at the height of physical perfection, obviously. This movie just doesn't give me a lot thematically to work with. But after ruminating on it for a while, I think I got something. Sarah experienced a heavy amount of trauma and tried to work through it on her own, but really wasn't able to. 
She constantly has nightmares, can't sleep, and has to take some kind of medication that's never specified in the film. Beth and Juno are very concerned about her, but she seems to make an effort to keep her trauma to herself and just let it fester. Apparently, Juno wasn't too active in staying in touch over the year of recovery before this trip and wants to use this to reconnect. But I think, because of the fact that she also lost her lover, she may also have been going through grief and trauma and pushed herself away and collected some new friends along the way. A dangerous free spirit who doesn't take the precaution she should and steals my heart. And this feeds into some of the self-destructive tendencies of Juno. So the cave could be read as a means of exploring this trauma lost. And when they help each other, things go smoothly. When information is hidden from them, like Juno not telling them that the cave is different than the one that they were intending to spelunk in, or when the other girl finds out that there was a previous expedition, people get hurt. Contrasting these scenes with the one where Beth helps talk down a panicking Sarah and assists in surviving something that would have probably killed them both, we can see this in action. When they work together after discovering the creatures, they're a lot more successful. And maybe if Sarah hadn't broken Juno's knee, they would have succeeded in getting out. Maybe that's what the last jump scare is about. We can work together and forgive people for the slights that they commit against us, or we will be haunted by their wounding words and actions. It's hard to say. Juno is also dealing with the trauma of losing both her friends, first her possible lover, then Sarah with her lack of contact with her, then watching them die, in an unhealthy way. She pushes people away and seems to be kind of two-faced. On the one hand, we have this cold self-preservationalist, and on the other, a woman who cares deeply about her friends. She feels guilt and pain over her actions, but never really owns up to them. Had she, again, the party may have been more cohesive and survived a bit better. So this movie is fun. I think that I am stretching to get a thematic read here, but that's just because it's a pretty simple story overall. It does what it wants to do. It's an isolating, claustrophobic movie with a great atmosphere. I really enjoyed it. It won't be in my top five horror movies, but still, I highly recommend it if you found this talk interesting. I'm still working on several different projects, considering what movies I want to talk about and balancing that with the movies that people are suggesting. I'm also still working on the time travel. These videos have reached more people than I ever really intended. Everyone has been really nice, which is good. One day, I might even be worthy of your praise. With that said, though, I'd appreciate it if you would like and share this video. Maybe leave a comment of another movie that you want me to talk about. Thanks. This is Sean, your possibly time-traveling vampire monster, signing off.